Picture this. It's a stormy, rainy day. It's hot and it's humid. You're in the car with five other guys. The aircon is broken. The windows are shut. It is stuffy in there. It is wet because it's raining outside and you can't put the window down because if you do, the rain's gonna come in. So you bear with it. And then just one of your friends takes a massive fart and gasses that entire car. And now you're sitting there contemplating why. Why am I here and why did I do this to myself? Now that, my friends, is exactly what will happen if you bring dumplings that are filled with cabbages and pork in a Tupperware to wherever you go. It's a tactical nuke that's just gonna knock the crap out of anyone that comes near it. And so it brings me to this video. Let's talk about some foods that just don't travel well, specifically more Chinese food, but I'll include whatever foods there are as well. And some foods that you normally don't think could travel well, but somehow they do. The So the first one, as you guys can imagine, the pork dumpling. Steamed, boiled, fried, whatever. It smells great, tastes great, and is amazing, fresh. But you put that thing in a little Tupperware while it's piping hot and you smack a lid on it. After a few hours, my word, that thing is a living stink bomb. You open that thing and a five mile radius around you is just gonna be nuked with that cabbage smell. And guess what? My mom packed me that exact lunch almost every other day for my entire primary school life. I didn't want to offend her because she went out of her way to make food for me. I didn't say anything except just, you know, <laughs> power through it every time. Now on to the second food item, we're talking about soup noodles. You know, ramen, pho, and the likes. You're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, uh, why are we talking about that? Obviously that can't travel well, like, how would you get that to work? Well, that, my friends, it's true, for the most part. You know, if you have a nice bowl of soup noodles and you just chuck that into whatever Tupperware and take that to work, it's, this, it's not gonna work out really well. You know, the soup is gonna get cold and the noodles, you know, they're gonna get really, really soggy and it's, you know, kinda ruined at that time. But, surprise, surprise, in Asia, I'm not sure about the West because, uh, you know, I don't really want a lot of soup noodle takeouts here because I live in South Africa and we don't have a lot of options of those. But either way, in Asia, you can get that as takeout and it's super easy to transport. If you're going super cheap, they just literally put the soup and the noodles in separate packets. And when they finally get to you, you put them together in your own bowl. And there you have it. The noodles are not soggy and the broth and all the ingredients are still relatively warm from that trip. But what happens if you want to keep that nice hot broth warm for hours on it? Well, conveniently enough, Unlike our Western counterparts, the Asian Tupperware game is on a whole different level. And I mean they have engineered this weird contraption to hold the perfect ratio of noodles, soup, and whatever the hell you want in order to not only keep each ingredient at the optimal temperature, but keep it safe long enough for you to eat. Now what's amazing about these lunchboxes are that they can be applied and are mostly applied when it comes to bentos. Yes, these are the bentos that I'm talking, not the Japanese ones that you buy at stores and whatever, you know, like a standard box and then they have the ingredients like next to each other. No, I'm talking about the bentos that have multiple different layers. You see, usually what happens, they put different ingredients or different dishes or different layers so the heat transfer can kind of keep each slot in check almost. Or whichever slot needs to be insulated, That'll be that, or whatever slot needs to stay cold, they all stay cold. And that way, when it comes to lunchtime, you can crack that thing open, and whatever food that needs to be warm will still be warm, and whatever food needs to be cold will still be cool. You can have rice and like a few different dishes, all set up for lunch. Now that's crazy. Now the third, I guess, uh, technically the fourth food, I want to talk about are fried foods. Now, in Chinese culture, breakfast items are deep fried and very carb heavy. This is specifically in Taiwan. Obviously, you know, different parts of China, people have different breakfasts. But in Taiwan, they have a lot of fried foods for breakfast. We're talking about yotia, which is kind of like this long deep fried bread thing. We've got pancakes that are like nice and crispy, almost kind of resembling a paratha. Slap an egg on that. 
And then we have this almost the equivalent that reminds me of the British crisp sandwich or bread sandwich when you have a cob on a cob and we have where you put this yotiao into another another pastry item. I can't remember the pastry item at the moment. But yeah, traveling with those items are a bad idea. Because as you all know, with any type of fried food, irrespective of the origins of it, don't travel well within a contained environment. Mainly because that thing steams and the crispiness just loses its value every second it is steaming in your Tupperware. It's to my dismay that I've had my fair share of fried foods that I'm so excited packing it in, in the morning only to find out hours later when I open it up, it's gone soggy. And there's something about eating fried food that's not crispy and just extremely soggy that brings out the greasiness of it tenfold. So my recommendation is to just keep that in like a paper wrap or not bring it at all because uh, it's, it ain't worth it. Trust me, it ain't, it ain't worth traveling with fried foods. But that's it for me today. I just wanted to go on a little rant about foods that don't travel well. See you guys next time.